sits naked on a rock a few yards out in the water. He stands on the shore, also naked, picking blueberries. She calls. He turns. She opens her legs, showing him her great beauty, and smiles, a bow of lips seeming to tie together the ends of the earth. Splashing her image to pieces, he wades out and stands before her, sunk to the ankle bones in leaf mush and bottom slime, the intimacy of the visible world. He puts a berry in its shirt of mist into her mouth. She swallows it. He puts in another. She swallows it. Over the lake, two swallows swim, juke, jink, and when one snatches an insect, they both whirl up and exult. He is swollen, not with ichor, but with blood. She takes him and sucks him more swollen. He kneels, opens the dark, vertical smile, linking heaven with the under-earth, and licks her smoothest flesh more smooth. On top of the rock, they join. Somewhere a frog moans, a crow screams. The hair of their bodies startles up. They cry in the tongue of the last gods, who refused to go, chose death, and shuddered in joy and shattered in pieces, bequeathing their cries into the human mouth. Now in the lake, two faces float, looking up at a great maternal pine whose branches open out in all directions, explaining everything. She sits naked on a rock a few yards out in the water. He stands on the shore, also naked, picking blueberries. She calls. He turns. She opens her legs, showing him her great beauty, and smiles, a bow of lips seeming to tie together the ends of the earth. Splashing her image to pieces, he wades out and stands before her, sunk to the ankle bones in leaf mush and bottom slime, the intimacy of the visible world. He puts a berry in its shirt of mist into her mouth. She sits naked on a rock a few yards out in the water. She sits naked on a rock a few yards out in the water. He stands on the shore, also naked, picking blueberries. She calls. He turns. She opens her legs, showing him her great beauty, and smiles, a bow of lips seeming to tie together the ends of the earth. Splashing her image to pieces, he wades out and stands before her, sunk to the ankle bones in leaf mush and bottom slime, the intimacy of the visible world. He puts a berry in its shirt of mist into her mouth, she swallows it. He puts in another. She swallows it. Over the lake, two swallows swim, juke, jink. And when one snatches an insect, they both whirl up and exult. He is swollen, not with ichor, but with blood. She takes him and sucks him more swollen. He kneels, opens the dark, vertical smile, linking heaven with the under-earth, and licks her smoothest flesh more smooth. On top of the rock, they join. Somewhere a frog moans, a crow screams. The hair of their bodies startles up. They cry in the tongue of the last gods, who refused to go, chose death, and shuddered in joy and shattered in pieces, bequeathing their cries into the human mouth. Now in the lake, two faces float, looking up at a great maternal pine whose branches open out in all directions, explaining everything, mush and bottom slime, the intimacy of the visible world. He puts a berry in its shirt of mist into her mouth. She swallows it. He puts in another. She swallows it. Over the lake, two swallows swim, 
juke chink, and when one snatches an insect, they both whirl up and exult. He is swollen, not with ichor, but with blood. I am a light, born to a light, soft and malleable, impressionable and changing, prone to breakage, prone to honesty, hairy and stocky, one foot on the ground, Happy to let the workers go around me. Fill in for everything I could not do. For them, I was creation. A voice of the innocent. Something to cherish. Guard and hold on to. But as time moves forward, I became a dependent who was depended upon. Real world gamblings, those who needed me, I tried to remain solid Although I was still not firm. And for my efforts, I never became free. Swept out to sea, nuking the serpents, letting those around me try and keep me around. Failing at reality, I looked back at childhood and saw that window was drawn shut and closed. Now is the time to embrace femininity to be so frail that I don't get much done yes I was overtaken willingly and without reservation praying to God to accept what I've done as it seems the harder I try the deeper I dig the mud walls around me always crumbling again time to take with me my keen sensitivity and release those I love. Let thy will be done. A piece of fluted berry 
always makes the syndrome less despondent, cried the older statesman. Within the confines of the universe, 45 were rationed. As it stood, the little frog only had a day's worth. Before his larger seedlings took root, every being was free within his or her approved mineral. On days like these, you could just smell the flower's first perk, enjoy the ripple on blades of green dander, even eat a twist of moonfisk just before market. Always the positive fellow, Marginchen licked the last of his seeds from his back sack full of wonder. What a joy was creation! Let's venture now into its inner working. Travel with me as I lift your spirit and engage the senses. Run with my laughter. See the fellow? He's not shining with purple light. He captures all color in his backpack. Not to scare, though. With a whisper, he can fold back into the light of morning. Round the corner now to three maidens bathing. Not to embarrass, only to function. Bathing maidens never feign glory. Only they can produce liberty. Only beauty can embrace freedom. Deflect the burden of character. Not to ignore its place in the life force, but merely to stir up its capacity. There, in the smallest little crevice within the tiniest crack in the most miniature groundswell, lies the circle. Lift up the tender morsel. It vibrates and tries to leave the palm. Its fear is as ancient as our love. Its apprehension makes the flavor all the sweeter. Let it fall, but only once. See it crying or dancing or morphing. One can never be sure. It's trying to twist its circulation, become a different form of matter. It's looking like it might disappear. Behold, it's back with us, transformed, enlightened, a bulb of quality, a comfort to us all. The universe smiles in appreciation. What a fantastic freedom we are experiencing. Stay within the journey, statesman. Stay within. There was never a blink of regret with our love. It's just a final release. The totality of labor life force, and creation. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For if you refuse to let them go, and still hold them, behold, the hand of the Lord will fall with a very severe plague upon your livestock that are in the field, the horses, the donkeys, the camels, the herds, and the flocks. But the Lord will make a distinction between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt so that nothing of all that belongs to the people of Israel shall die. And the Lord set a time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord will do this thing in the land. And the next day the Lord did this thing. All the livestock of the Egyptians died, but not one of the livestock of the people of Israel died. And Pharaoh said, And behold, not one of the livestock of Israel was dead. But the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, 
and he did not let the people go. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Take handfuls of soot from the kill, and let Moses throw them in the air in the sight of Pharaoh. It shall become fine dust over all the land of Egypt, and become boils breaking out in sores on man and beast throughout all the land of Egypt. So they took the soot from the kill and stood before Pharaoh. And Moses threw it in the air, and it became boils breaking out in sores on man and beast. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils, for the boils came upon the magicians and upon all the Egyptians. But the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and he did not listen to them, as the Lord had spoken to Moses. Then the Lord said to Moses, Rise up early in the morning and present yourself before Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For this time I will send all my plagues on you yourself, and on your servants, and your people, so that you may know that there is none like me in all the earth. For by now I could have put out my hand and struck you and your people with pestilence, and you would have been cut off from the earth. But for this purpose I have raised you up, to show you my power, so that my name may be proclaimed in all the earth. You are still exalting yourself against my people, and will not let them go. Behold, about this time tomorrow, I will cause very heavy hail to fall, such as never has been in Egypt from the day it was founded until now. Now therefore send, get your livestock and all that you have in the field into safe shelter, for every man and beast that is in the field and is not brought home will die when the hail falls on them. Then whoever feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh hurried his slaves and his livestock into the houses. But whoever did not pay attention to the word of the Lord left his slaves and his livestock in the field. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward heaven, so that there may be hail in all the land of Egypt, on man and beast, and every plant of the field in the land of Egypt. Then Moses stretched out his staff toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail, and fire ran down to the earth, and the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. There was hail and fire flashing continually in the midst of the hail, very heavy hail, such as had never been in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. The hail struck down everything that was in the field in all the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And the hail struck down every plant of the field, and broke every tree of the field. Only in the land of Goshen, where the people of Israel were, was there no hail. Then Pharaoh sent and called Moses and Aaron and said to them, This time I have sinned, the Lord is in the right, and I and my people are in the wrong. Plead with the Lord, for there has been enough of God's thunder and hail. I will let you go, and you shall stay no longer. Moses said to him, As soon as I have gone out of the city, I will stretch out my hands to the Lord. The thunder will cease, and there will be no more hail, so that you may know that the earth is the Lord's. But as for you and your servants, I know that you do not yet fear the Lord God. The flocks in the barn were struck down, for the barn was in the ear of the flocks was in bed. But the wheat and the barn were not struck down, and they were later coming up. So Moses went out of the city from Pharaoh and stretched out his hands to the Lord, and the thunder and the hail ceased, and the rain no longer poured upon the earth. But when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunder had ceased, he sailed yet again, and hardened his heart, he and his servants. So the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people of Israel go, just as the Lord had spoken to Moses. No, she grew uh, old. Significant in these four she made ready to die. She gave counsel to women and men, younger girls and younger women. She remembered her She remembered her She forgave friends, she learned Romans, friends. countrymen. Lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is often interred with their bones. So let it be with Caesar. 
The noble Brutus hath told you that Caesar was ambitious. If it were so, it was a grievous fault. And grievously hath Caesar answered it. Here, under leave of Brutus and the rest, for Brutus is an honorable man, so are they all, all honorable men. Come I to speak at Caesar's funeral. He was my friend, faithful and just to me. But Brutus says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honorable man. He hath brought many captives home to Rome, whose ransoms did the general coffers fill. Did this in Caesar seem ambitious? When that the poor have cried, Caesar hath wept. Ambition should be made of sterner stuff. Yet Brutus says he was ambitious. And Brutus is an honorable man. You all did see that on the Lupercal I thrice presented him a kingly crown, which he did thrice refuse. Was this ambition? Yet Brutus says he was ambitious, and sure he is an honorable man. I speak not to disprove what Brutus spoke, but here I am to speak what I do know. You all did love him once, not without cause. What cause withholds you then to mourn for him? O oh, judgment, thou art fled to brutish beasts, and men have lost their reason. Bear with me. My heart is in the coffin there with Caesar, and I must pause till it come back to me. Bear with me. Bear with me. My heart is in the coffin there with Caesar, and I must pause till it come back to me. How clueless is laggard then, disregarding all that is set before it in the dignity of wealth. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, should I not seek rest for you, that it may be well with you? Is not Boaz our relative with whose young women you were? See, he is winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. Wash, therefore, and anoint yourself, and put on your cloak and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. But when he lies down, observe the place where he lies. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down, and he will tell you what to do. And she replied, All that you say I will do. So she went down to the threshing floor and did just as her mother-in-law had commanded her. And when Boaz had eaten and drunk, and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of grain. Then she came softly and uncovered his feet and lay down. At midnight the man was startled and turned over, and behold, a woman lay at his feet. He said, Who are you? And she answered, I am Ruth, your servant. Spread your wings over your servant, for you are a redeemer. And he said, May you be blessed by the Lord, my daughter. You have made this last kindness greater than the first, in that you have not gone after young men, whether poor or rich. And now, my daughter, do not fear. I will do for you all that you ask, for all my fellow townsmen know that you are a worthy woman. And now it is true that I am a Redeemer, yet there is a Redeemer nearer than I. Remain tonight and in the morning. If he will redeem you, good, let him do it. But if he is not willing to redeem you, then as the Lord lives, I will redeem you. Lie down until the morning. So she lay at his feet until the morning. 
but arose before one could recognize another. And he said, Let it not be known that the woman came to the threshing floor. And he said, Bring the garment you are wearing and hold it out. So she held it, and he measured out six measures of barley and put it on her. Then she went into the city. And when she came to her mother-in-law, she said, How did you fare, my daughter? Then she told her all that the man had done for her, saying, These six measures of barley he gave to me, for he said to me, You must not go back empty-handed to your mother-in-law. She replied, Wait, my daughter, until you learn how the matter turns out, for the man will not rest, but will settle the matter today. I've known rivers. I've known rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood in human veins. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I bathed in the Euphrates when dawns were young. I built my hut near the Congo and it lulled me to sleep. I looked upon the Nile and raised the pyramids above it. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans and I've seen its muddy bosom turn all golden in the sunset. I've known rivers, ancient, dusky rivers. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I've known rivers, I've known rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood in human veins. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I bathed in the Euphrates when dawns were young. I built my hut near the Congo and it lulled me to sleep. I looked upon the Nile and raised the pyramids above it. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans and I've seen its muddy bosom turn all golden in the sunset. I've known rivers, ancient, dusky rivers. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I've known rivers, 
I've known rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood in human veins. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I bathed in the Euphrates when dawns were young. I built my hut near the Congo and it lulled me to sleep. I looked upon the Nile and raised the pyramids above it. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans, and I've seen its muddy bosom turn all golden in the sunset. I've known rivers, ancient, dusky rivers. My soul has grown deep like the rivers.
Thank <laughs> you.